There's a new feature in Snapseed from Google that can help you turn an ordinary headshot into a strong, captivating portrait. In this tutorial, I am literally going to turn a frown upside down using Snapseed's incredible new face pose feature. Let's get started with this photo of my friend Ethan sitting in a field of flowers. I'm going to launch the Tools and Filters menu here in Snapseed. Next, I'm going to scroll all the way down by swiping one finger vertically across the screen. You'll find the new Face Pose filter here at the very bottom of the Tools and Filters menu. When I launch this new tool, it will take a few seconds for Snapseed to analyze this image. Right now, this amazing app is automatically detecting Ethan's face, and then it's going to map his facial features around a three-dimensional model so that we can improve his pose. Let me warn you about a little caveat, though, while this filter is doing its thing. The new face pose filter is currently designed for images like this one, where we only have a single head. I suspect that in time, this tool will work on images with more than one face. But for now, one face is all that this tool can handle. Anyway, now our 3D model is ready. So now we can push or pull one finger across the screen to move my subject's face around. I'm going to swipe my finger down and to the left. Check this out. Where before, it appeared as if Ethan was looking past my camera. Now, it looks like he's looking directly at us. What we're doing here is changing his pose and the direction of his gaze. Now, I would be delighted if this was all that we can do with this new filter. But wait, there's more. I'm going to tap on the word adjust down here on the toolbar to bring up our options menu. And then I'm going to swipe down to change modes. Ethan was willing to sit and let me take this picture, but he wasn't willing to throw in a big smile for the camera. So I'm going to use this smile option to reposition his lips and jawline. Drag my finger to the right will bend his lips upward. Dragging my finger to the left will bend his lips and jaw down. Dragging left makes him look really unhappy, which is not the emotion that I want to express in this image. So I'll slide that smile control back up to about plus 40. Now Ethan looks really happy. Finally, I'm going to swipe up again to bring out the adjust menu, and then I'll change over to the focal length control. I understand why the brilliant engineers at Google called this one focal length. In traditional DSLR photography, the lens that you choose for a headshot can make your subject's face look slim and narrow or wide and round. I get the idea behind the name that the Google folks picked for this control, but there are no units here. So it's not like we can say, oh, I wish I'd used my 50 millimeter or 100 millimeter type lens for this portrait. Since there are no units, my advice is swipe back and forth horizontally a few times in both directions to see what settings look best for this particular image. In this case, I think that about negative 20 looks good. I'm going to press and hold the before and after button in the upper right corner at this point so you can see what a difference this filter has made. Before, we have an image where my subject looks slightly annoyed. After, we have one where my friend is looking right into the camera and showing us a happy smile. I'll tap on the check mark in the bottom right corner of the toolbar now to commit these changes and to return to our home screen. At this point, I should save my work, but I'm going to open up another image instead to show you how powerful this face pose filter can be when we combine it with some of my other favorite tools here in Snapseed. This time, I have a picture of my nephew, Aton that I shot one day when we were out at the playground. My nephew and I get along great, but at the exact moment when I snap this photo, Aton has more of a puzzled look on his face than a big, big smile. My goal here is to make the very best portrait that I can out of this photo using all of Snapseed's incredible tools and filters. Now, I've already tuned up the color and the brightness and all of that stuff to get ready for this tutorial. So I'm gonna skip over those steps, but if you're playing along, Make sure that the whole image looks good first. To demo, let's go right back into that face pose filter. Once again, there'll be a little pause while Snapseed detects my nephew's facial features. Just like last time, now that our 3D model is ready, I'm gonna push my finger around the screen to reposition his adorable little face and to pose his head at a better angle. Watch as I drag up and to the left 
how Snapseed literally pulls his face and his hair around for me. I've got to say that the way that this app shifts his hair is just amazing. They say that the eyes are the window to the soul, and often in portraiture, nothing matters more than the direction of your subject's gaze. By tilting Eitan's head up and to the left, I can make his gaze more direct, and I can make it look like he is far more engaged with us and the camera. I'll tap on the adjust button now, and then I'm gonna swipe one finger to the right across the screen to adjust the size of my nephew's pupils. It's not just the angle of his head or the tilt of his lips. With this tool, we can even expand the size of our subject's eyes. Now you can get carried away in here and make people look goofy and bug-eyed. It's easy to add way too much with this tool. A little bit larger is all that I think we need here. Next, I'll slide my finger up to bring out the adjust menu, and then I'll change his surprised look into a hint of a smile. Finally, I'm gonna make Eitan's face a little narrower by setting the focal length to about plus 40. Before, in our original image, my nephew doesn't look too thrilled about having his picture taken. It's okay, but it's kind of awkward. In the after, there's a direct gaze, big eyes, and at least a hint of a smile on his face. Since things are looking good in here now, I'm gonna tap on the check mark to commit these changes, and then, I'm gonna bring up the tools and filters menu to take things even further in here. I'll swipe down to the bottom of the filter list again, only this time I'm gonna launch the face enhance filter. I've covered face enhance and all the other tricks that I'm about to demonstrate in previous tutorials. So if I do something in here that you've never seen before, please go back and watch one of my other videos if you need more help. Of the four features in the face enhance tool, it is the eye clarity control that I'm after right now. So I'll tap the None choice for the style. Next, I'll tap on the Adjust button on the toolbar and swipe down to the Eye Clarity control. As you may recall, this feature adds sharpness, saturation, and brightness into your subject's eyes. About plus 50 ought to work just great here. If needed, I would certainly use the skin smoothing or the face spotlight features in here too at this point but Eitan is much too young to need any of that. And I'll add a vignette around his face using a different tool in just a second. Since I've accomplished all that I need in here, I'll tap on the check mark to commit these changes. And now we have bigger, brighter, and more captivating eyes to go with our improved position for Eitan's head. Let's go to the tools and filters menu again, and this time to the lens blur filter. When I shot this image, I did my best to hide most of the distracting stuff that was all around my nephew at the playground. I think I did a decent job here with my camera, but with a little help from the elliptical blur tool, we can do even better. To get started, I'm gonna drag that blue edit pin over a little so that it's centered right between my nephew's eyes. Next, I'm gonna use the thumb and forefinger pinch in or push out move to expand the inner white ring until it's a little bit larger than his head. Now, I can slide one finger to the right across the screen to set the blur strength to about 40. With a vertical swipe, I'll switch over to the transition control at this point. Remember that the transition controls the distance between the blurred and the unblurred areas in your image. In general, a long transition zone keeps things looking more believable. In this case, I think a transition of about 50 is what I want. Finally, I'll swipe down and I'll set the vignette strength to about 45. That's gonna darken the edges and the corners of this photo. That looks great to me. Let me commit these changes with the check mark in the bottom right, and then I'm gonna add one last tiny little refinement. I used the vignette option a second ago in the lens blur tool to cast a dark shadow around the edges of this image. I darken the corners down to push your attention in towards the center. Adding a vignette is an old trick in portraiture that makes it harder for the viewer's eyes to leak out the sides of the frame. So now I'm gonna try to pull your eye into my subject even more by brightening up Aton's face just a tiny bit. 
I'll drag the blue edit pin here with one finger over the center of Aton's face, and then I'll use the two finger push out move again to expand that white circle so that it includes his whole head. Now, I'm going to tap on adjust down there on the toolbar. I'm going to set the outer brightness control here to zero this time. Since I already added darkened edges using the lens blur tool, we can darken the edges down using either tool or both. But in this case, I don't think that there's any need to make the edges any darker than they already are at this point. It's the inner brightness control in here that I actually want to change. About plus 10 should be plenty to shine just a little more light and thus a little more emphasis into his happy face. That looks perfect. All right, now for the complete before and after. Before, after. I think that's amazing. Thanks, brilliant Google geniuses, for this new face pose filter and for all of these other amazing tools that we mobile photographers need to make our portraits come alive. If you've been playing along at this point, don't forget to save your work, and I'll see you soon in our next tutorial.